Thanks for joining me today. We are going to create the easiest, spookiest cards for Halloween. Stay till the end for a special sneak peek to a future video. All right, so I'm going to use these edge dies and this spooky paper. It's very, very thin paper. And we're going to make some very easy cards for Halloween. How many people send out Halloween cards? All right, so creating some card bases out of off-white. And then I'm also doing a matting layer in black and just cutting these down. So I'm cutting a lot out of this video because there's a lot to show. I'm gonna use this edge die and decide where I want to cut up this spooky scene. So I'm gonna cut it in half and I'm going to use up some multiple pages of this spooky paper because it's so thin that I think I can get two or three behind there and still cut through it with my edge die. Now you can use any paper you want here. You can make a background. You can stamp a whole bunch of things around on a background and do this same cutting aspect that I'm showing you. I'm gonna throw this into my die cutting and embossing machine. And then you see, I just cut him in half, that spooky guy. And then I'm just going to get my card base ready. I'm using a five by seven card base. I'm gonna move all these pieces that I cut out very easily. And then I'm gonna put them back together like a little puzzle. And then I'm gonna cut some off of the ends because I'd like there to be more space for me to put a sentiment in the center where it's cut in half. So now I'm looking at a second piece and this one cut kind of a little bit weird and I guess that's when I cut it all at the same time. Just her little hat is off, but same kind of concept. I'm gonna cut off the tops and I'm only gonna show you how I do one card and then you'll see all the different kind of elements I used in these cards. At the end, I'm gonna do like a run through of all the cards I made and I made about 13 of them plus our bonus card, which is my upcoming card making video is going to be a similar technique to my final card that I'm gonna show you today. Okay, so back to this. I am going to cut this second one out a second time because I really chopped off her head and I don't wanna leave that big space between her head and the hat that she's caught on. So I cut out a second piece and then I can put a sentiment there. I have one sweet one, which is a couple of little ghosts there because my almost four-year-old grandson is a little bit afraid of certain things. So I don't wanna send him these scary ones. So I thought he might like those little smiling ghosts. But most of the rest of the paper is a little daunting, a little spooky. So again, just showing you how I'm doing a few different elements. I have this pretty orange paper that's definitely a Halloween color. And we're going to put that in the background that we can put our sentiments on. And then I also use this matting layer for all the different pieces that I cut out with that edge die. And you can do a lot of things to cut these pieces out. You can actually use that same edge die and put it back on here and then use your die cutting machine machine and cut them all around close to the edges there. Or you can do what I end up doing, which is I fussy cut them all out. And that way I have just a small amount of the black to make this card. And you'll see that in just a second after I glue all this down with my tape runner. And here we go fussy cutting this out. So it's probably easier. And I would want to say I did half where I fussy cut them and half where I used the edge dot and just put it up next to these and then use that and ran it through my die cutting machine. In this case, it would be, you know, four times so to get it nice and close, but it matched up really nicely and you can do it again either way. I thought it would be faster to fussy cut, but as I got through this project, I got tired of fussy cutting <laughs> and so I let the edge die do it the work, but either one will work. And again, any type of paper that you have will look pretty with this kind of concept. You can do this with flowers. You can do this with butterflies. It doesn't have to be so spooky. So I decided to give the matting layer a little definition by running it through a dry embossing folder. It's a leaf setting, but you're really not gonna see it. You're just gonna see that there's a little bit of texture there. And I thought that would be kind of cool with this spooky paper. Again, this is the one where I cut her head kind of off, her hat little, little hat off. This is my bin of sentiments for 
other holidays. So it says other holidays, you can't see it, but it's on the top. And so I'm pulling out my Halloween because that's considered an other holiday. Christmas has its own little bin. Birthdays has its own little bin, but other holidays like Valentine's Day, Thanksgiving, Halloween is all in one bin. Okay, so I'm taking out my little powder pouch there and we're going to emboss this with some embossing powder. So I'm going to use what's new to me, my new stamping platform. My other one just stopped working. So I tried a bunch of things and then had to give her up. So this one's a little bit bigger for me, but I like it. It's a Tim Holtz brand and I'm really happy with it so far. So I'm going to use some Versafine ink here because I want to put some embossing powder on there. And this is a good one because it gives it a lot of definition, but it also has a really nice color and really good application for stamping. It's my favorite to use that and Memento. So I am using some embossing powder and I will link all the colors and all the brands below, but I think it's called Boogie Down Black and it's a Lindy's brand, but I will certainly put that in. And then you can just use a small paintbrush if you have some extra pieces, little flecks that got in there. I got a little dog hair in there because as you guys know, I have five dogs, so their hair is everywhere. I could have easily put clear on here because I used black ink, but I chose to use some of this black embossing powder because it has a little bit of sheen to it, a little bit iridescent, and I thought it would look kind of cool. And this is my fancy Farberware <laughs> pan, and I use that when I am embossing with a heat gun because it prevents my paper from warping or curling up like it normally would. And again, I preheated that gun, so that's super important. Preheat your gun for about 30 seconds before you start heat embossing. It must be a tape runner kind of a day for me. You guys know I usually don't do tape runners but I actually think I refilled my tape runner twice during this card making session. So that's a lot for me. Okay, I'm just using my bone folder and straightening out that edge there. And we're going to put this down and then assemble the rest of the card. Again, I'm only going to show you this first card because I'm going to do kind of a montage at the end of all the cards I made. And I'll show you what I did different with each card. But this is the basic concept. So we're cutting this card either once or multiple times. We're putting a sentiment on there and we're either using, in this case, a runner or we're using foam tape. And I did all sorts of different things to make them just a little bit different. You know, this is fun for me too. I like to make them all a little bit different when I'm doing a grouping. And in this case, I just decided to tape run it all down. In some cases, I just made the middle one popped up with some foam tape. So lots of different things you can do here. Just be creative, whatever floats your boat, go with that. It doesn't really matter. They all look good. And this is just a quick, so if I'm going to have to make a lot of cards, this is a quick way to do that. I'm just taking a themed paper, pattern paper, cutting it up, and it looks a little decorative. You put something behind it, and that just looks cool. And I like, as you guys know, to include something on the inside as well as on the outside. It just ties it all together for me. And I usually use my scraps. And here you see I'm using all the pieces that I kind of whacked off the bottom of my pattern paper and putting some glue on here just to make sure it all stays down. But I did that with most of the cards. I think that there's two of them. I forgot to do the inside, but I'll get back to it. So that's uh, one of them. Them. I'm going to show you just a couple more elements that I did in this one. I foam taped it all up. And so as I mentioned, that is something that you could do as well. And that gives it quite a bit more definition between that orange matting layer and the popped up pattern paper. All right, so this is my special bonus card. And you're going to see at the end how it all comes out. But I cut it into multiple pieces. So it's like a puzzle. And then my next video is going to be called the puzzle card video. And it's because you cut it all apart and then you put it back together. You know me, I don't do a lot of measuring. I will give you the measurements when I put out the next video because this one actually needs a little bit of measuring, but not a ton. So here you'll see I'm just cutting this and it has specific lines. So I'm going to be able to keep them all the same or fairly the same. We're just giving it room so that the matting layers can show through here on this card. This is my matting layer and I'm using this matting layer instead of the black. And I did that in some of the cards. Some of the cards I used this this first matting layer as orange, but most of them I used the black. And in this one, you're going to see that I'm using orange layer for just a small amount of matting layer behind 
the cutouts. So I'm just going to assemble these all these puzzle pieces back together and then I'm going to show you just a little montage, just some music of all the cards that I made today. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you realize how easy this could be and are starting to think about all the paper that you might have or all the stamps where you could stamp images and then cut up the paper in similar fashion. So I'm not going to show you how this entire card works and I'm not showing you all the different measurements but in my next video when I do the puzzle card you'll understand that that's where I got this concept from. The point is to make sure that you're making all the different puzzle pieces and then it goes together. It's a type of fun fold card where you're going to fold it in the center and then it also stands up by itself because it's kind of a z-fold as well. So lots of different elements from other cards you've probably made in the past, which will make this a little bit easier once you see me do it in my next card video. This is also going to be a 5 by 7 card, so I'm cutting this as a 10 by 7 sheet. And then we're going to score this, which will make the z-fold for us. And so we're going to score it twice so that it can z-fold. We're going to do either end. So sometimes to keep myself where I need to be, I start with the two and then I do the next one. And I usually flip it over so that because one is facing towards us and one is facing away from us, it just looks a little bit nicer if you've got the folds going the correct way. And then I used my paper trimmer to cut out the puzzle and, and then I'm fussy cutting the squiggly parts of it. And then here's where the black matting layer will come in and we'll attach this all to the paper. And then I cut out the black as well. And then I'll show you what that looks like. So these are the cards. I hope you enjoy this music. You can see some are popped up. I'm going to keep quiet so you can take a look at these. I did put a bunch of gems on here and then you'll see the bonus card at the end. Thanks for joining today. Thank you.